Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our live stream today. Oh, there's a needle there, that's what's stopping it from moving. Um, and we're making fantasy butterflies and they are, um, I'm going to make them slightly smaller than this one here, but you can um, upscale them obviously at any point. And um, there's a couple, there's one here and where's the other one gone? I've got, ah, it's hiding. There is the other one. So they're um, they're almost a real size uh, butterfly and um, they work really nicely as brooches. So if you need to uh, get something like a quick fit, fit, fix for uh, Mother's Day, this is your opportunity. It's a stash buster. Oh, I can't believe I, um, the screen is not right. Okay, I'm gonna have to get up and put this right, otherwise it will drive me nuts. So I'm going to just um, tell you what today's price is because uh, every Tuesday we're going to have a price and here it goes. Our giveaway today is two £15 vouchers and you can um, win them by putting in the comments, um, what are you putting in the comments? You are telling us a favourite memory of your mum. Now, I want to say something else about this. Mums come in all different shapes and disguises because they're not always ah oh, now my head's shaved off oh I can't believe this okay you stay here and I'm gonna adjust the camera so I can actually see what I'm doing okay so don't don't go away the, it will just wobble a little bit and I'm just gonna get this right now here we go right okay I should have done that in the first place um sometimes a mum is also who you think of as a mum. It doesn't have to be your bio biological mum. It could even be somebody who is a role mo model that you consider being your mum. So do tell us, what are you telling us? Your favourite, um, today's favourite memory of your mum. Pop it into the um, comments and of course that will also apply for the Thursday re um, life what do, you, what do we call it? Restreaming, is that a word? Um, on, on Thursday, we are going to uh, repeat all of this on our Facebook page at seven o'clock as always. Oh, I've got a bit of hair sticking up today as well. Okay, it's one of those days. Don't look at me. I'm just going to, uh, I've got a bad hair day. Maybe I should have chopped the head off my, the top of my head off in the camera. Let's just move on. Okay, so we're making butterflies. Let's just see who is here. Um, so we've got a few people in the house. Um, Ashley is here a bit early today, but um, you can never be too early. Ashley is there. Uh, sorry, Ashley, I said all right. Rachel is there, Sandra, Gina. Um, ah, she's managed to get the cleaning done in time to join us. Uh, it's lovely and sunny here in Lincolnshire, a lovely spring day. It's really lovely and sunny here in the wilderness as well. Um, Elaine is there. Um, Jane is there. Hi, Jane. Oh, bless you. She always says it's the highlight of her week. I feel so um, very honoured that you say that. And I um, I hope I'm not letting you down with my bad hair day today. Um, hi, Steffi, Alicia and Fluff friends. Absolutely gorgeous weather here in Somerset. Have enjoyed a lovely walk with my Spaniel Monty. Lovely. And I actually enjoyed um, a lovely run with my Spaniels uh, this morning. Rose is there. Erica is there. Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Vampire Venom. Hi, Marion. Dawn, Donna, and another Donna. Two Donnas, one from Scotland. I don't know where the other, other Donna is from, but um, I should know that because you've probably told me. Um, Alison is there, Laura. Hi, Laura. Um, oh, Van der Meer is there. Hello from the sunny Netherlands. They're sunny in the Netherlands as well. Melanie is there. Um, Diane, hi, Diane. Kat, good morning, Kat. Um, Ashley, well, it's actually good afternoon, but maybe it's good morning where you are. Tell us where you are. Um, and then we've got C. Choi and Sylvia and um, Sue and Elizabeth. And if I've missed anybody, please don't take it personal. So um, let's get cracking with our fantasy butterflies. So first of all, what you need is a template. Now, there, I've just... Um, uh, found these on the internet 
um, and it's just drawn around um, around them basically. So if you um, if there's anything you want to find, um, use it as long as you don't commercialize it, then you can use any kind of template. However, if you have got um, the Making Fairy Folk book, then you have got also templates in there for um, for the butterfly fairies in the book. So you could use these templates in the book there and trace around them with the water sol on the water soluble paper, which I'm going to show you. So if you haven't got the fairy folk book, these are the two um, butterfly fairies here on the front of the cover, then maybe that's a good reason to get it, especially as when you're watching this today, which is the... Um, potentially the um, 22nd of March. Oh, it's, it's the 22nd, 03, 2022. 20, so it's a nice date. Um, then, do, um, then do use our flash sale code, flash all in capital letters 30, so three zero. So all capital letters, no space, three zero. And it gives you a whopping 30% um, off on our website, but it only lasts for 48 hours. So if you're watching this anytime after Wednesday, the 23rd, midnight you've had it it's now or never and don't linger too long because potentially at massive sales like this we are also selling out of certain things so that would be a shame if you uh, missed out on um, your favorite products there'll be loads that i'm mentioning today especially to do with 2d needle felting in terms of tools and the things that you can use so maybe um, this is a, an opportunity to make use of that sale code again and i'm really really sorry that you missed out on thursday when you're watching this um, for the second time live okay so what i'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the um, template that I've got here. And then this is the water soluble paper that we sell. Um, it comes in two different sizes, a 10, so, sorry, 100 by 90, 90 centimeters, so a meter by 9.9 .9 meters. And it comes in a smaller version as well. You get absolutely loads in there. I've already sort of dug into there a bit, so that's why it's a little bit... Um, disheveled not because um, that's how we pack it and um, I'm just going to cut a little strip off here so maybe I can manage to make two butterflies today let's cut a little bit off with um, these beautiful rainbow scissors which I absolutely love they are really superior quality they're nice and heavy in your hand so you don't feel like you've got flimsy um, scissors there they're very very um, very very sharp and very smooth it's good they're good they're put together very well and they've got rainbows so you get it all in one piece and then you need um your template lay the water soluble paper over the top and then use a pencil that's not completely um sharp um and i always say that because if you use a pencil that's very sharp. You can sort of snag the end on the on this um, slightly. It feels it feels just like a dried up wet wipe, and I should know that because I accidentally used one, thinking it was water soluble paper, and then feeling very uh, confused why I couldn't wash it out when or, or dissolve it when I put it into the water. So I'm going around this template now, putting the lines exactly where they need to be. This one in there. You could also do your own butterfly version. Um, you you might want to draw one on a doubled up paper, and then uh, cut around it, and then you've got um, a mirror image of of the shape that you have drawn. So I'm going to draw the body on there. There. So now I've got um, my butterfly template here. I can put this to one side, and I'm in fact going to cut off that little bit of water solid paper on the side there and so the next thing um, I need to do is I need to decide what wools um, to use and um, this is a stash buster and um, would you believe it I haven't brought any wool to my workstation here so um, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna need to kick up my uh, backside because I'm obviously um, a complete dream pot today so I do apologize but I'm just going to pick lots of wool that I've got kicking around here and um, and I'm sure that something in there will be perfect for making butterflies. Okay, so I have got at the moment 
these colors i've just grabbed some um space dyed rainbow this is brilliant for making butterflies because you get so many colors in there um, i do like this golden orange that's already a mixed wool something else with it i've got a bit of um oh this is the uh, blue turquoise multi-tone top here um i've even got a bit of fairy mix um i've got some um turquoise shimmer here as well and a lot of other bits and pieces there's a little bit of the of the cornish um cornish seaside there and uh, the rest i'm just going to put um away for now um the nice thing is that you can mix fibers so let's have a bit of this um of this one here as well i actually can't remember what we call this come come fire i think it was in the come fire surprise box and now you need to decide what mat you're going to use to needle felt on i've got i've got them all here today so i have got here just to show you i have got the earth friendly felting mat there I've cleaned it before but on this occasion i would use it on the firmer side um i've also got here two brush mats big one and the small one because i wondered whether no, it better fits on the big one so i'm going to show you how to use these we haven't used these in a long time because we don't really need to i've also got our eco wool mat here this is the size that we sell on our website is a 20 by 20 centimeters these keep selling out they are really good they're not as nice and as luxurious as our earth friendly felting mat but they are absolutely fine to use on a small um on on shorter when i say shorter projects i mean not not for many 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 years but you can also layer them up so you could actually put more layers over the top it's something that i keep doing on my workstation when i um, make up samples i actually layer up my uh, wool mats and um and then i have one really big one and then just lay little ones over the top and um and that's another idea um there you go another reason to buy one of these earth mats or these woolly mats what I would say is don't lay them on top of a foam mat because they get felted to a foam mat and then you've got to get rid of both of them if you can't separate them again. So I'm laying my little butterfly here onto the top and now I've got to kind of plan or not plan, just do whatever you like basically, how I'm going to make this butterfly. Um, now this the uh, wool tops obviously are of, of a really long fiber and the wool bats have got relatively short fibers but you can mix the two so i'm going to show you how to mix these two i've made a purple uh, that's not purple a blue butterfly and so i'm going to mix the fibers now together i am actually shortening the um, wool top a little bit in the process because they're really long fibers and we don't cut wool um, because you don't want the blunt edges you want to have them almost sort of um, separating um, naturally so i am pulling it a bit harder than normally just mixing it to mix the two fibers together let's add a bit more of this turquoise sparkle in there use what you've got at home you really don't need to go out buying new wool um, because this is the whole idea for this particular project that it, it is a it is a um slash buster and i've actually torn off a little bit of that um part of the um cornish seaside to put a little bit of a of a brighter color in there as well looks very beautiful right so once you've mixed your wool then you're going to literally paint the wings in with this color and you need very little wool so you could actually just lay it over the top and then tease it out so that you get the colors overlapping that bottom wing and i'm starting with the bottom wing because i want the top wing to be slightly overlapping over the the bottom wing and then you choose your felting needle start with a single needle um a coarse needle works really well except for this one okay i'm gonna try the different needles this is the uh, coarse twisted black top needle that feels really good works really well um this is the orange medium needle that works too really good actually i like that um let's try what else can i try let's try the fine for this um it's less less grippy but you could actually uh, use this too and let's try the twisted medium 
sorry, this is the medium fine, um, similar to the fine green, not so, not the best one, but I think the purple one will work quite well, and the purple is the medium twisted. Yeah, that works really well too. So my vote is um, go for the coarse twisted, the medium twisted, um, the orange medium, and I haven't got a white one here, I don't think. Um, but what I do have is a star. Is that a star needle? Yellow. Somebody remind me what yellow. Oh yeah, that is a star. A star needle. So the star or cross star needle, that's what it's called, works really well too. So yellow yellow works really well. Right, what I've been doing is I've, I've covered that bottom part of the wing up, but I'm obviously not uh, staying within the confines of my um, line. So now I've got to bend over these fibers just enough so that I can see that outer line and gently stab them in. A tip is that you do establish the wool inside the wing first because it, um, when when you stab the wool in, it pulls it away. So if you establish it on the on the outer line first and then felt into the inside, it pulls it away from the outer line. So it's best to stab it on on the inside first so that you don't pull it away from the outer line in a minute. And the um, the rule is that you overlap all of the shapes so you have to overlap into the body as well and into the upper wing i haven't done that yet but i'm going to do that now i'm going to sneeze no no <coughs> yes excuse me i think that's the first of hay fever coming and raising its ugly head i can really do without that um but um yeah well anyway we can live with it too so I'm just overlapping the shape a little bit because the wings can't be separate, especially when you're um, dissolving the water-soluble paper, um, because they need to melt, the wool needs to grip into each other, even though they may appear as if they're separate because of the colorway that you are making it. So as you felt anything flat onto your mat, you're gonna have to lift it off gently because what happens is that you push the wool from one side all the way through to the other side and um, it obviously sinks into your felting mat. So that's um, one of the wings done. So let's just, while the wing is um, here, let's just have a, a look what else we can use. So I've got here the Clover 5 needle felting tool. It's got five fine needles in there, it comes with a needle. Absolutely love this one because it works for 2D and for 3D and the purpose is that you can use it and smooth the wool out really quickly. So any sort of lumps and bumps, you can speed up your work, but I would definitely start out with a single needle. Now the same principle applies to the seven needle felting tool. This is an, um, a much cheaper version, comes with seven fine needles, but they're a lot closer together. And because they're closer together, it sometimes is quite hard to push them through denser fabric. So it's not actually working on here at all on this felting mat. So let's try it on the um, softer side. It's not working on that either. Let's try it on the... Mm, I really would have to push it through. So actually, to be honest, I think I would have to use it on a brush mat and then it's working absolutely fine. So if you want to save yourself some costs and you like these wool mats, then um, don't have this, okay? However, if you've got it, use it. It's absolutely fine. Right, so let's um, get to the other side of the wing. And I can just see that the wool is pulled away a little bit here on the edge. So I'm going to add, I'm going to make a very precise, very um, perfect butterfly today. I always say that I'm not particularly a perfectionist crafter, but I, I will try. And now I'm going to go over to the other side. A tip that I will give you when you're working on butterflies, always work in symmetry. So if you've done one wing, then go and do the other wing rather than coloring in the whole half of one side. Definitely color in one wing and then color in the other wing. So I've been a bit more generous with the wool here because I've got to overlap the shape and lay out the wool in the direction of how the wing um, the wing is so you would lay it out that way and that way 
you wouldn't lay it that way, stripey. Um, and then you felt that down, find the edge, felt into it, and then bend the wool over so you can make it fit into that pencil drawn line exactly where it needs to go and establish that. You can actually churn out these butterflies quite quickly as well once you get the hang of it. So I don't want to spill outside the, the black line even where the body is but we do need to fit the body on top so it needs to be a part of the whole shape so I'm actually colouring in um, almost all of it and then use the tool slap it down you don't need to have any of these multi tools they're nice to have but not necessary you can do everything in um, with your single needle and so now I, I probably want to uh, use a different color for the top wings but I'm going to just have a quick chat um, with you all and seeing what you are putting in the comments to win your 15 pound um, voucher. Okay. Can we get the loopy locks on the sheep samples? You can't actually. Um, yeah, we, we, we don't do that because we don't sell them loose. We, ha we always sell them in, in, in portions. So sorry about that. Had a fantastic holiday with my dad's late fiancée when they first started dating Holiday Park in Cornwall. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, Sylvia, welcome. So many great memories and still making them. But the sharing of our gardening passion, including garden tours, are some of the best. Oh, that's nice. Had a terrible mum, but lucky dad makes up. And mum is, and mum is mum and dad in one. Excellent. That's what I said. It's not always um, the kind of mom that we maybe imagine. Maybe it's uh, it's it, she comes in different um, disguises. So um, I did want to tell you a story about my family, but it's not my mom. It's actually my grandfather. But it, it reminded me the the butterflies in German butterflies Schmetterling. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but you know sometimes you say instead of butterfly you say flatterfly. So he would um, always say, um, instead of Schmetterling, he would say Letterschming. And it used to drive me nuts as a, like a little, I don't know, six or seven year old. And I thought he, he couldn't say it properly. So I kept saying, um, Grandad, you're saying it wrong. It's Schmetterling, not Letterschming. And he said, no, 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 I'm saying it right. It is Letterschming and pretending like he was saying it right. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the German word for grandfather is um, Großpapa which basically means great father, um, grandfather, basically. And he, um, and and so instead of saying a uh, Großpapa, he would always say, well, I'm your Graspopo. Now, this is really funny if you understand German, because grass is obviously grass, like the green grass that grows outside, but Popo means bottom. So he would always say, I'm your grass bottom. And I would like go completely mad as a child saying, no, no, you're my Cross papa, not my grass popo. And um and so we had this he he must have um loved it because I was getting so excited, always saying, No, you're saying it wrong, and he's saying, No, I'm saying it right, you're hearing it wrong. And so anyway, it making the uh, butterflies always reminds me of my grandfather who uh, was having me on as a as a child. So that's um I thought you should know that um, little um funny butterfly story because it um it does make me smile. Right, um, so where was I? Favourite memory of my mum is when the grandkids came to visit, she would bake pancakes shaped like cats rather than the standard circle. Oh, nice. Uh, Gina says, when we were little, our mum made us a sledge so we could enjoy the snow. It was quite heavy when climbing back up the hill to slide again. Oh, um, Marian says, remember helping my mother in her hairdressing salon when I was like that's funny actually Marion because I grew up in a hairdressing salon salon it wasn't my my grand my mother's but it was my mother's friend and um yeah she hung out there all the time how on earth I survived I'm 
um, probably going to die of lung cancer still one day because in that little uh, staff room that they were all in, the air was thick. You could have cut it with scissors. It was so thick, um, filled with smoke. Children of the of the seventies, dear oh dear, and um, I do remember they had these um, they had these big bottles of shampoo um but they they portioned it out in in almost sort of like it it looked like a syringe but it didn't look quite as um medical as a syringe and i i remember standing in the corner regularly and just squirting the shampoo on the floor and slipping and sliding with my feet like doing um and and um being found out every time because obviously when i went quiet i was usually causing trouble so i remember that um yeah with all all the can you imagine all these ladies with their curlers in their hair and happily smoking away oh my goodness honestly um ah oh, heather is there good afternoon Steffi and alicia and everyone um diane saying have bought a number of sheep swatches mm -hmm. well talking of which they're here and they're just so much fun. I mean, I just, I love them. I really love them. Like, really love them. Yeah, you got the gist. I love them. Um, Rose says, one of my favourite memories of my mum was taking her shopping every Saturday morning. Um, Dawn says, I've just had an operation on my knees. Knee and my mum, 85, comes every day to help me. Wow, how about that? That is amazing. Um, Julia says, to help mum... The help mum gave me when my children were very small really gave me much needed time to myself. Oh, you're so lucky. I struggled along. I remember pushing my first two children, because there's only a year between them, along on the street. And complete strangers would come up to me and say, it will get better. <laughs> I must have looked terrible. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with this butterfly. But before I do this... Um, let's just tell you what's happening uh, next week and the week after um, in terms of our live stream. So we have got finally the teacup scene that's uh, coming along. Um, we've had a very similar subject in our surprise box for um, this month. So it's not too late to get your surprise box. However, what people have made has absolutely bought me over. Uh, bonsai trees and um, all kinds of things. Bonsai tree seems to be the main topic um, with um, the, the surprise box. But we are going to make a teacup scene with, um, well, it's a slash buster, I'm afraid to say. So there you go. You can use up lots of your wool. And then, of course, on the 1st of April, not an April's Fool, but we are opening our April sub boxes, which is... Um, which is Love Our Planet. And then on the 5th of April, we are going to um, make cute little bunnies and they are from the um, um, Making Simple Needle Felts. And, and they look a little bit like this. Very cute. Very simple project. You can see it's literally an egg with ears um, and a little fluffy tail and um, some cute little button eyes and a bit of pink on on its nose and you can churn them out and make lots of them and have them all looking happy happy during easter um wherever you post them oh dear the, the eye wasn't glued in sorry just gonna push that in gently I must glue the eye in okay anyway you didn't see any of that um there we go it's got all the eyes da 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 Okay, and um, I'm going to continue with the upper with the up, upper fly, butterfly for goodness sake, um, and I'm going to do the upper wings. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so what are we doing for wings? Well, I feel we need to keep close to the colors here. So maybe use a little bit of purple. Maybe tease a little bit more out of here, out of that um, amazing. Um, rainbow top and uh, the, the the thing is that with wool tops obviously you've got quite long fibers whereas with uh, wool bats and I'm going to make another one with wool bats you've got shorter fibers so um, there is um, really no no problem using long tops with 2d needle felting I always I always uh, say oh they're not so great for 3d felting and that is I remain with that but for 2d felting they're absolutely fine right let's give this um, a bit of a mix and see what color comes out of it looks quite similar to the bottom wings but we don't want them to be too different anyway and 
let's test it, lay it down. Maybe they need to be a little bit more purple. So I'm going to put a little bit more purple into there. Mix that up. There. And let's have a look. That's a better colour, I think. There's a little bit more contrast. And it's the same principle. So let the, um, the wool spill over um, into the bit that spilled over. So you're basically overlaying the wool. Now I've made sure that the bottom wings spilled over into the top wings. And so I can make quite a distinct line now between the top and the bottom wings because it's going to be connected. And just lay the wool out in the right fashion. And stub it down, establish it first inside the wing and then just begin finding the outline of the wings. So this butterfly, I've given it pointy wings at the top. I think they're sort of quite random. They're not specific shapes of butterflies. That was sort of quite a random shape. And thread that down. As before. And to speed things up, using my five belting needle tool, you can probably get a gist of what tools I'm preferring here. I uh, will also show you in a minute how to use a three needle felting tool because you can use that tool on the butterflies and that, um, that will speed work up as well, albeit not as quick as um, using your uh, five needle felting tool. And it's less for making it really smooth because they're medium needles. It's more for speedily adding wool and um, you've got your prim, sorry, not prim, your um, clover three needle felting tool. So that just speeds up adding the wool to your wing. I'm just going to make sure that I've got the edges covered here. Let's put that down. Here we go. And spill into the body as well. And then I'm going to do the other side as well. A test of whether you've um, added enough of the um, butterfly, um, enough wool into the butterfly is to hold it up against the light. And if it's really, if it's really um, um, thin, then add more. And Alicia has just made a comment that um, if you wanted to, you could buy multiple of these um, needle felting tools and just have each one filled with different um, size needles so you don't have to change them every time you want to use different size needles so for example the this and I think we're mainly referring to the um, to this one so you could have one with fine needles one with twisted needles one with medium needles even one with coarse needles and um, and then just mark them one way or another so you know what's in there and um, and then you can use them they're at the ready for ev every eventuality that you might um, encounter. Right, let's get this felted down the same way as before. Need to bend these fibers down in a minute. So I don't want to lose that pointy edge. And that side is almost done quick going over with my five needle felting tool tease it off the back's looking like that now front's looking like that and just adding a bit more into it this is actually a wool that I haven't mixed but I just want to get a little bit into this corner here Actually quite nice adding a bit of um, a different color over it. These are fantasy butterflies. You can um, design your own however you want it to look. I quite like that blue coming in. I'm going to give it and now the um, the body is almost filled in but I, I am at attaching a 3D shape over the top of it so it doesn't bother me too much. And over it again 
and um, you can leave it as that or you can start um, adding little decorations over the top of that as well so I'm sticking with um, with the um, tops so what shall we put in there I could put a couple of stripes or some spots this is where you have to design your own butterfly I'm literally making this up I have no idea what I'm doing yeah at the moment if you're making a butterfly and you're using these multicolored tops, it looks really nice to then put black veins over the top. So this is a slightly larger version, but let the let the wool do the coloring. So you could use the rainbow coloring and then add the black over black veins over the top. It does look really nice. And this one hasn't had the water so, uh, water soil paper washed out, so it looks a little bit um, floppy still and uh, messy, but um, it will look a lot nicer once the um, don't know if I can just no I'm not gonna do that. That doesn't look right. Let's put some spots on it. Alright, I'm just gonna use a bit of this orange and put a spot onto it. Let's put a spot here onto the top of the wing. I think that's quite nice with the with um, the contrasting colours there another one on the other side so always work once you do one side go and do straight away the other side so that you can work in symmetry on your butterfly and melt it down all over And then let's do a bit more of this. I think that looks quite nice, adding sort of details like that into it. Put some here. Slightly less vibrant one. And then one here, same way. Letting the edges spill out a bit. It's a slightly different color, but that's fine. And then I feel I need to put something into the bottom wing as well, which could be, let's see what colors I've got here. Maybe we need to use some of this purple. Lots of this is a contrast. Maybe the blue. Put a bit of blue in the bottom wing. As I said, I'm making this up as I'm going along. It's no plan whatsoever here. Do it on the other side. And as long as you lift your work off regularly, the water soluble paper will not get um, too much a touch so that it tears so I think I'm going to leave that butterfly as it is because I don't want to over egg it and um, what I need to do now is I need to make a body to go into the center and for that I'm just going to grab a little bit of brown wool um, I've got here I am using the um, Portuguese merino but you can use any wool but I'm showing you now a technique that makes a nice neat sausage and you use your felting needle to wrap the wool around it. Um, if you've got a piece of wire and you prefer doing that, then do this because there's always the danger you um, poke yourself on that needle at the front there. And you need to wrap it really tight, like a ribbon, flat like a ribbon, around the needle, depending on how big the butterf butterfly body is, um, and build the layers up as you go. So we don't want this to be too fat a body, but also not too small. And once you've got it nice and firmly um, wrapped around that needle, then all you need to do is pull the needle out. So you've got a separate little sausage there. And I would now suggest to go down to a fine needle because this has been wrapped really tightly. You can barely felt into it. But then the idea is that you don't have to felt into it a lot. Just firm it up so it doesn't unwind itself and then you're going to lay this on top of the butterfly like this like a little body 
and you're going to stub it into the um, layers and into the water soluble paper by first of all going around the edges of that body so you're not flattening it you want it to be lay uh, you want it to appear like it's on top of the butterfly rather than um, flat to the butterfly and Felt it down on the water soil paper if you want to. You can even stab it from the other side a bit so that you're almost pushing the fibers that are underneath back through the brown. Yeah, and then felt it down again from this side. Sometimes butterflies, they have sort of like a real um, faint, dusty layer going over the top. I'm not going to do that on this one. Um, and then the only thing that you need to do now is you need to use your scissors scissors, and cut around the shape of the butterfly. So the body obviously will be separate. And it's another opportunity to neaten out your shape. You... Um, can still add wool over the top if you now realize oh there's a weak patch you can still do that it's not too late at all you can even do it once you've um, dissolved the water soluble paper and um, the butterfly has dried you can even then still um, even things out so now I've got my delicate little butterfly here and if you um, if I look at it, it against the light it looks quite good actually there's nothing um, too much um, you, you can now also cut um, the um, other side a little bit, um, cut some of the fluffy bits off because they're felted in, they're not going anywhere. And all you need to do now is, and I'm just going to do that quickly, you need a bowl and you need some warm water, lukewarm water. Put that in there. And you need... A dry cloth which I've got too and all you're going to do is you just dip the butterfly in on both sides and then you're going to give it a bit of a squeeze because you want the water so the water to completely distribute around um, the butterfly there and now it feels really floppy my fingers are sticky and that's exactly what it needs to feel like and all you're going to do now is um, I'm just going to go to the Big camera you're going to use a little card whatever you've got that uh, you can fold over and you're going to perch your butterfly upside down onto there like that so that it look um, so that you've got the um, the wings are facing forward or um, back on in towards the front so when it's dry it maintains that shape because the water soluble paper will dry um, into a fa fabric stiffener. So that's basically, I feel very sticky my fingers. So make sure you keep some of that water soluble paper in there. And as I haven't done it with this one, I'm going to do that now as well. So this one I've made earlier, that's the back, that's the front. I'm just going to dip the wings in. And then dip the other side in and now I'm going to squeeze it. The water soluble paper literally disappears in front of your eyes. Give it a good squeeze and then it looks it's always a bit nerve-wracking when you have to squeeze the butterfly and then um, again you can use sort of like an old Christmas card even which I've got here. Lay it over the top there and then stand the card up into that position where you want the wings to be when they're dry and then put that down to dry. Now I'm quite impatient when it comes to things like this. I would I would put it on a radiator to speed up the uh, drying process but that's just me because I, I am impatient and I've got to just uh, dry my hands. Okay, so that's one butterfly done. And what I will show you, just in case I don't have time to finish a, another one, I will just show you our magic no sew uh, brooch pins. Sorry, everything's a bit wet now. 
And um, I, I do this best by um, showing you the overhead camera. So this is a butterfly that I've made earlier, and you can see that the wings are now staying in the direction um, the way that I dried it. They're quite, it's quite, it's a lot stiffer than it was before. It holds its own weight. It doesn't flop. And now to turn this into a brooch, um, you can take your no sew brooch pin, which is actually a safety pin, but without the coil. And you just insert this into the butterfly like that. And then you swivel it round and you've got a pin here fastened onto your butterfly. Now I'm going to talk about the um, antennae in a, in a minute, but basically you have got um, a really good solid fastening here and, um, and that should be enough now to um, um, keep your butterfly nice and secure. And the good thing is that you can take them out anytime. So if you if you didn't want to use them, I'm sorry, there's a lot of pinging going on. I don't really know how to stop it. Just have to, I don't know, I should have silenced my computer, but I didn't. So it's just one of those things. Okay, so there's the butterfly and then you can pin it onto wherever you want to. And I'm gonna talk about the antennae now. Okay, first of all, before I talk about the antennae, I will just show you, I have got my felting mat here. It's got lots of wool on it because I've been using it. And then with my magic brush, I am going to clean it up. Um, and these brushes are really good. I use them all the time. They're really, really good. And what I do with the excess wool, I put it out in the garden for the birds um, because they build their nests um, and they find all kinds of exciting warm things that they will use and um, that's perfect can you imagine how cozy that is a woolen nest um, so for their chicks perfect there you go so I'm going to keep that and I'm going to put this out for the birds because um, I think they will love it and my felting mat is clean again okay so antennae there are so many different ways of um, well I a slight exaggeration. I know of two different ways of how to do antennae. <laughs> Typical me. So let's um, let's look at the antennae of this butterfly. We actually sell these. They are they are like little flower stamen that you can um, fasten onto the butterfly and then secure with glue. Um, you can also use wire. We've used wire on the large blue here, um, so that's more stiff. And it's the um, it's this kind of wire reel that we sell on our website, the black thin wire. We sell it in, in gold as well, so you could give them golden um, antennae as well if you wanted to. And um, yes, basically, that's the two versions that, um, that I said there are lots of ways, only two ways. Okay, shall we have a go at another butterfly? Hopefully with a bit of luck. I don't know if I can put it in front of a dryer to get it drying. Well. Let me try this, but what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to tell you a little bit about our upcoming um, subscription boxes. So we are now almost at the end of March. How did we get there? Who knows? But the next box is going to be, the next maker's box is going to be the Standing Fox. Um, what's special about him is that he has got a pom-pom tail and the pom-pom tail um, has got a wire running through the middle which means that he is poseable, so you can uh, bend the tail. In fact, the whole fox is poseable because it's um, because it's a um, wire armature. So it's a small wire armature fox that is standing up, and you can position him. And he is um, he comes with a um, he he comes with a, a little mat that you can decorate with wool to make it look like a grassy patch that he's standing on. Okay, then the butterfly fairy, very similar to the principle that I've just shown you. So if you ever need to get any tips before we get to making the butterfly fairy as a live stream, this is where you're going to go to this particular live stream here. And then Love Our Planet has got many, many um, wonderful fibers in there that um, with, a mean, with a meaning, with, a, with, a earth, with an earthy meaning. Maybe you should put it that way. Then we've got the little owl, which is a real size little owl, um, 
part of the collection that you may already have got with the barn owl and the snowy owl. Then we've got the queen bee fairy because it's that kind of time of the year where we would have lots of odd queens and um, and bees. And then we have our May surprise box is themed street party with some um, innovative um, little accessories that you could turn into festive items, um, summery festive street party kind of items. Then in June we have got a budget, he's lying down with his tummy upwards, a ladybird fairy, it's all the bugs, butterfly, bees and ladybirds. And then um, our, our surprise box is themed how does your garden grow. All very exciting stuff. No, we all know exactly what's in the boxes already. And I'm having a cup of tea, by the way. So I drink it now before it gets cold. And um, and um, yeah, just hang on. Okay. I hope you've got a nice cuppa there as well to enjoy. Maybe with um, a piece of chocolate. That reminds me. A piece of chocolate. Ah, oh, just before I um, started the live stream, I grabbed a piece of chocolate. From the house but it was my husband's chocolate and he ate, eats 85% dark chocolate it's horrible I bit a bit of bees off and I said here do you want to finish it um yeah no I don't like it oh that reminds me not not that there's any connection whatsoever thumbs up everybody tell us that you um, like this video by um, pushing the thumbs up subscribe to our channel because then you get notifications when a new live stream pops up and um, I'm, I've told I've been to a, a show the last few days um, up until Sunday and I've told loads of people to come and watch me so hopefully um, you have new fluffy friends joining us and um, we have an ever-growing um, fluff family here um, let's have a look um, Katie says before my mom died of cancer we would go out for coffee and just chat which was so lovely and a memory I often look back on oh that's nice I think sometimes those times um, are more precious than anything. I've had a very similar um, experience. I, my mother and I, we never got on that well, I will be honest. Um, but I think a lot had to do with her mental health. And um, in those days, there wasn't much um, known about it. So I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with her. But um, then when she, the, the few years before she um, was diagnosed with cancer, she wasn't actually diagnosed then, but um, things changed, changed for her be, um, and because she was ill and she realized that she had mental health issues and things changed. So our relationship got better, but I have very fond memories of, um, she was diagnosed with cancer and she died three weeks later. It was one of those. And um, I have fond memories and so much laughter and so much tears of joy and sadness all at the same time because my sister and I were around her bed and we just, we just, I don't know, we just did what we did, um, coped best as we could and she, she made us listen to absolutely horrific music because that's what she wanted to listen to, like proper German folk music, which is, oh my goodness sound of sound of music that kind of thing it's like it's so creepy and cheesy I can't even begin to tell you um, but we sat through it and we laughed and we had a giggle um, and 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 fortunate and unfortunately she wasn't well enough to go for walks but we did just about everything to keep her amused and um, had lots of laughs as well and we talked a lot and we talked about everything that uh, was going on so there wasn't like it wasn't like you know there was no elephant in the room the elephant was spoken about Right, um, one of my favourite memories with my mum is baking with her when I was little on Sunday afternoon and licking the bowl out after. Oh, that's nice. I let my children do that. Estelle says, my favourite memory is my mum making my wedding dress and three bridesmaids dresses. They were all beautiful and just how I wanted them. Oh, that's nice. Um, Sylvia says, my mum was brilliant at knitting and needlework. My sister and I had magic cardigans with designs on and we did rug making too. That, me too. We must have um, um, must have had similar things happening in a parallel universe. We did rug making and also my sister and I, and not just my sister and I had matching outfits. I had matching outfits with my dolls as well. And they were usually orange, brown and um, yellow. And they were crocheted from top to bottom. Yes, very fetching. Um, I am hiding those photos. I'm never going to show them to anybody. Uh, Elizabeth says, my mum mum taking me on 
the Christmas pantomime hospital trip unfortunately lost her 34 years um, so many good memories oh. um, Kat says oh Kat says the bunny is so cute oh thank you Kat um, Marian thank you for sharing Steffi it really took me down memory lane <laughs> yes <laughs> oh and um, Vampire Venom says, I remember going to Cadbury World with my mum, sister and granddad. Mum and I would sneak off for a smoke with both quit now or to put cream on her tattoo while my sister distracted granddad. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, and Donna says, great fantasy butterfly, have a large jar of stash wool to use up. Yay, get rid of that stash and buy more. Um, right, um, what else is happening? Um, I feel that uh, I shouldn't start another butterfly. So I'm going to tell you about our summer weekend retreat because we have had a couple of people um, jump off um, for whatever reason or another and we have still got spaces available. And at first I thought we only had tent village, the tent village with a, with a um, bell tent, but we have actually got space in the big house again. So please get in touch if you fancy a whole weekend just stubbing fluff. We are making a large figure which could easily become a, a gnome, a tomter, a witch, a wizard or any sort of kind of um, fantasy character that you fancy making. I will make up a sample as soon as I'm coming up for air and, um, and then um, that hopefully will give you an incentive. But the last retreat, which was in January, all we did is I made a, um, a dragon up and um, and then we um, we used that as the basis. And people took it and made the most fantastic dragons I've ever seen. So um, that's it. Okay, so um, where are we with the time? Well, I, th I guess we're at the end of this live stream. So get your quick uh, random number creator on Alicia and pick us a winner so I can announce the Tuesday live stream winners here. Um, right now and then on Thursday obviously that will all be done through the comments on Facebook. Remember we've got a, a group Everyone a Maker where you can um, join. We just ask you to stick to Makers products only if you're sharing anything and that you're there out of personal interest and um, we would love to see um, everything that you make including your fantasy butterflies. I'm sure you will make them much more beautiful than I have and so I can't wait to uh, to see yours. And I think we've got a winner. Okay. Okay, so we have we have two winners. One is Donna Z and the other one is Sylvia. Um oh Oh, Sylvia. I think she said Sylvia. It's her American accent in my German ears. Sometimes they have all kinds of, um, it's like Chinese whisper. Um, that I'll tell you a funny story about Chinese whisper. So when my youngest daughter was really, really little, she, um, she thought Chinese whisper was absolutely hilarious, but she completely missed the point. She didn't understand that you say something that's quite normal and then as it makes the rounds through people's ears, it actually turns out into something completely different. But, um, she must have been like maybe four or five. So we said, okay, then you, you go. And then she would always, always whisper into somebody's ear. And you know, when you've got a little, little face really close to your ear and it gives you like, it tickles like crazy. And she's like hot air shooting out and all like, everything is like, oh, like really like you get goosebumps. And then she would always say, she would say, Ada, Ada. And um, so, so, she, so <laughs> we're like, do you mean other she wanted that to be the word that came out at the end so she always said it right at the beginning so we said no you can't say this and um she didn't understand she just couldn't get the concept so every time it was her time she said Ada, Ada. we all knew she was going to say Ada, and um, we just played along with it but um yeah i i do remember that that really hot 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 child like like whispering in your ear that was more like um like you were eaten up by by um oh yeah that you know what I mean has anybody ever done that to you so um so well done Donna Z and Sylvia O 
Um, all you need to do is send us a message um, to info at the makers, so makers with the double S's, don't forget uh, the two S's, um, and let us know that you have won yourself the uh, £15 gift voucher today with a YouTube live stream. We'll get in touch and um, and send you the link. And the um, voucher is, um, it doesn't expire. However, I will just say that you cannot use two codes at the same time um, on the checkout box. You only can use one code. So if, if you are wanting to use the Flash 30 code um, then use that first because your voucher obviously will last a lot longer. You can't use the two together. You have to use one or the other. And um, I guess that's all I've got from me today. So I will see you next week with... Ah, I will, use, I will see you next week on the 29th of March where we will be um, doing the teacup scene and then on the 1st of April for the unboxing. So we've got an extra date in there on the 1st. And um, until then, I wish you all a really lovely beginning of spring. Get out there, get some vitamin E in the shape of um, sunshine and um, tell us tell us what you've been up to and um, tell us, share with us your needle felting makes as always. Thank you very much everybody. See you soon.